coming up on show 578, Byton's M Bytes. Cox investing in Rivian and he and B going electric racing. Well, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. This is what happened on Thursday, 12th of September. It's Marston here going through every EV story that I can find to save you time so you don't have to. The world premiere of the Byton M Byte happened at the Frankfurt Motor Show this week, and it looks like an SUV, but if you listen to the Byton press release, it's actually an SIV, a smart, intuitive vehicle. But we'll call it an SUV because it's an SUV. It is a big car, big heavy car as well. According to Tom at Inside EVs, the uh, M Byte will launch to Chinese markets early 2021, then sometime in the first half of the year. Byton will export the M-Byte to the US and European markets. They want to be a global brand, and they know that there's only one chance to get a first impression. So they're taking their time. The schedule's moved back a little bit for more quality and testing. Rear-wheel drive SUV and an all-wheel drive configuration as well. Smaller battery, 72 kilowatt hours. Bigger battery, 95 kilowatt hours. They're claiming 320 miles on that. Sounds about right for a 95 kilowatt hour battery if it was very, very efficient. 95 kilowatt hours usable, by the way. So they leave a little bit at the top for more protection and a bit at the bottom. You can't run it right down to the last electron, again, for battery health and protection. So maybe that's 102, 105 kilowatt hour battery in the car, possibly. For an SUV, you know, if I got 280 miles out of it, I would be. It's a big, heavy, you know, it's not a, a car that is a sports car. It's going to make a big dent in the air as you plow your way through it. Motorway speeds, yeah, 260, 280 miles. I'd be really happy with that. I, I know it's a big battery. Maybe it'll go more, but maybe they're being optimistic at 323. Meanwhile, Auto Express confirms the it, Byton M Byte will indeed come to the UK. It's going to get a right-hand drive version. And the standout feature, without doubt, is the 48-inch OLED 4K display. It runs the entire width of the dashboard from behind the driver's steering wheel right to behind the passenger as well. Byton's CTO is David Twoig, and he said the company's targeting comfort, refinement, rather than chasing Nürburgring Nordschleife records. The car is going to have conventional steel springs and dampers. And it won't be offered with air suspension, for instance. And they say the starting price could be €45,000. No specs or prices have been real, revealed for the UK. One of the videos that might be worth watching, if you're interested in the Biden, and if you, like me, want to know more about this this Chinese brand, and actually the generally Chinese invasion, if I can use that word. Uh, that sounds awfully military, doesn't it? Um, but actually, these Chinese brands that want to sell to the Western markets, would you hand over your hard-earned money for one? Would you be more comfortable maybe leasing or renting if they did that kind of thing, like Polestar are going to do, because there's not as much of a dealer network? You worried about servicing? Or with EVs being a more simpler beast than piston cars, would that be okay? I'd love to know your thoughts as well about this Chinese uh, influx of EVs, they say, is coming over the next couple of years. Um, it, one of the videos I, I was going to say, actually, which are well worth watching, is Bjorn Nealand's videos. Bjorn was there for a couple of days at the Motor Show earlier this week, and he's just started to release them on his channel. And he's Tesla Bjorn on YouTube. I'm sure you've seen them. If not, he's someone who is very much a one-man band, rough and ready. And that is a backhanded compliment. I didn't mean it to come out like that. He's, you know, unlike a more polished EV channel, which we know would have camera people and sound people and lots of... He's very much like a, uh, like a vlogger, um, but he says it how it is. So if he's sitting inside... What I love about his videos is he's sitting inside a car with a a PR person or even a, a member of the senior management and he'll say, I don't like this switch. Oh, I love this. Oh, that's horrible. And he's pulling no punches. And so I love his honesty. He's done a big bit on Biden at Frankfurt. And I recommend if you're interested in that, though, go check out his channel because there's a lot to learn on there. Let's move on. And Cox Automotive. Well, they control brands like Kelly Blue Book and Auto Trader, Mannheim, if we're talking auctions. But they're going to be part of another one, and that's Rivian, says the website Rivian Chat. The company is due to uh, the company says that they're investing because of Rivian's unique approach to building an electrified future and the commitment to environmental change. But the real reason 
it's probably just because Rivian is a really good investment if you've got the money. Amazon have invested 700 million. Ford have invested 500 million. For some of these companies, it's chump change. And the intriguing aspect of Cox is that they always look after the the kind of automotive chain, if you like, according to Rivian chat, after production. So selling, servicing, evaluating vehicles. But now they're getting into actually making cars in a roundabout kind of way. I mentioned Polestar a moment ago, actually. Volvo's spin-off brand, Polestar. The Polestar 1 is an exceptional car. It is ultimately a hybrid. Big engine and a big battery as well. However, the Polestar 2 and everything onwards from Polestar is going to be pure electric. While Tesla is far from perfect, a company like Volvo realises their strengths and is outwardly admitting their admiration for Tesla, which is different to many of the big car companies, which take on a more adversarial role in their language they use about Tesla. But Volvo, although they are slightly smaller, and of course their parent company, Geely, a huge company, they are able to praise Tesla and say that these are the things they do really well and these are the things they think Polestar can do better. Polestar UK's Director of Development is Ian Collins and he said a a conference which was in Norway, uh, surely not the first time that Volvo and Polestar has brought Tesla to light or even touted their Uh, They're positives. Um, The quote I've got from Ian says this, Tesla has been active in developing its own technology, especially with regard to energy efficiency. They are far ahead of everyone else. It's an area that we have to continue to work harder to take back from Tesla. We have respect for them. As a competitor, we will compete for design. What we offer to customers and technological advances. We not only think about the drive line, but other parts of the car. I could have pointed out some weaknesses at Tesla that we address in our product, but I won't. End quote. Yeah, I think Polestar's design language, Volvo generally, but also also Polestar, the design is is on point. It's classic, it's contemporary, though. When you see them on the road, the Volvos at the moment, I think their styling is just superb, and the Polestars as well, and actually the Polestar 2 was shown off at the Frankfurt Motor Show. Lots of videos online now about, about that, and when you see it in the flesh, I think they've just nailed it. I think they've done really well. The technology's good. The interior, for me, everyone's different, right? Some people will want all the buttons, and some people will want all of the minimalism. I kind of like somewhere halfway between, and the inside of the Polestar 2, Pure electric looks really, really nice. Of course, this is a car that Polestar will, in the markets where they are allowed to do this, and it might even be state-by-state level in the US, according to different rules, they will uh, offer you a rental package. Well, rental's probably the wrong word, but an all-in-one price. So a monthly price for the car, insurance, servicing, and everything else. So it's, it's, I see people call it transport as a service, but it'll be one price and you get the car, and then all of your motoring or your, your mobility, there's that word, costs are covered. And I'm curious about that. We'll see what the pricing is like when we finally get to hear more about the Polestar 2. I'm a bit of a big fan of that car, actually. Let's talk Hyundai. And Hyundai Motorsport has revealed their new car for the electric touring car series, ETCR. It's the Veloster N ETCR. Based on the road-going version, it's going to make its debut in 2020. ETCR is a new era for motorsport and Hyundai as well. They see electric ro- racing as one of the pillars of their company. And it's fully electric, rear-wheel drive, mid-mounted motor, ETCR. I love touring car racing anyway. And electric touring car racing is one of those things that actually, if lots of different manufacturers get involved in it, what you see on TV racing on a Sunday could well be the car that on a Monday morning you get into and drive to work. Of course, it's not the same car, but you know, you know what I mean? It's like, that's the great thing about touring car racing is it's, it's, it's more every day. And uh, although some of the touring car series around the world, like German touring cars, you know, they've got the big spoilers, they've got the big body kits. Some touring cars actually just look like the normal car, from the outside at least, that you would have on your driveway. And with EVs, I wonder how big effect that will have in terms of convincing people, in terms of making people buy EVs, in terms of seeing EVs go racing, and then wanting to buy one for your own personal car. I I, I think it can have a really big effect. Right, a couple more stories, and let's talk Electrify America. And last week... Electrify America and Porsche 
made history together. During the official launch of the Taycan on the 4th of September, Electrify America, which is the charging network in the US, of course, it's not something that VW wanted to do off their own back. It's say something like a $2 billion investment uh, from the you've done a very bad thing, VW money. But they are doing it, and some of their chargers are 350 kilowatts hyperchargers. And, of course, with the Porsche Taycan taking up to 270, they stopped off with the Taycan at the Bloomsburg charger for Electrify America and did indeed charge at 270 kilowatts. It took, well, from 5 to 80%. From 5 to 80%, it took 22 minutes. And that is, I know on a car that costs 150 grand, but remember all of this technology trickles down to the kind of cars that you and I can afford. Not next week, not next month, but but soon, right? And so 22 minutes to charge your car. I mean, that is, well, it's game over for piston cars. Surely 22 minutes to go from when you're on a road trip, five to 80% on a big battery, that's game over for fossil cars because you can't get into the service station go to the restrooms get a snack be back at your car fully rested ready for another two or three hours of driving that's that's the dream right and it's well it's it's reality actually if you own a model 3 and you can get to a supercharger v3 or you own a you will own a porsche Taycan. that's the dream and it's coming really quickly And thank you very much for taking part in this week's question of the week this week. Still time to get yours in. Email me hello at evnewsdaily.com. A question set by Jill Noel on Twitter, inadvertently, because she didn't realise. I just saw her tweet this and I thought it was a great question of the week. What was your EV light bulb moments? Let me know on the comments as well, Facebook and YouTube. Thank you to 251 patrons of the show patron is how we fund the show it's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash ev news daily no pressure at all i'll do this show for free um thank you very much to phil roberts of electric future brad crosby and avid technology as well there are 577 previous shows online for free the new ones come first and free to subscribers and of course it is a free subscription say hi on the socials by searching for the phrase ev news daily and i should be your top result Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.